Um, <clears throat> I want us to recall, there's a ring on this, I want us to recall last week what Lori spoke. The title of what she spoke was, While I'm Waiting. While I'm waiting. While I'm waiting for God to open up the promise that he gave to me. While I'm waiting for God to open up the prophetic word that he spoke over me. While I'm waiting for God to open up the next season in my life. And she talked about how to navigate your time of waiting, stewarding your time, what you should be doing, what you should not be doing, and what the waiting during the waiting, what it accomplishes in your life. And this was ground setting for what I had, the Lord had laid on my heart, and I didn't know I was going to preach this morning, but pastor called and said, you know, he is not, he's dealing with his sinuses at this time of year, which he does. So I'm going, yes, yes, God. So... <clears throat> How do I navigate the new season when I've never done it before? How do I navigate the new season? And I want to look at Mary's life, who walked out the new season of her life that no one had ever walked out before and no one has ever walked out since. So the title of my sermon today is, What Will Your Answer Be? What will your answer be? So we've all been through the Christmas season. We know the story very well. This is going to be short this morning. This is not going to be long. Um, <clears throat> you know that the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, you're a chosen vessel to carry the Son of God. She says, well, I don't know a man. And he said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and his name will be Jesus. Very simple explanation. And, of course, in Luke 138 is her reply. This verse has always, always challenged me, this verse. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel Gabriel departed from her. Who says yes? Who says yes before they get the details of the assignment? Who says yes? without asking a lot of questions. Who says yes before they have asked counsel about a life-altering change? Who says yes immediately without any thought or prayer on the matter? Who says yes without any discussion with their fiancé or who lives now with your spouse? Mary did. Mary said yes to what God was asking her without knowing the details of her life and willingly embraced what was asked of her regardless of what it cost her or the process that she had to walk through in regards to her reputation, in regards to other people, family criticism, gossip of the town, the unknown journey before her being nine months pregnant and going from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which is a 90-mile walk or a ride on a donkey. That's like me walking from here to Young Street in Toronto. The unknown lifestyle. Mary willingly embraced them all. Plus, I imagine dealing with emotions of shame, guilt, fear. I mean, Herod's killing all the babies. We're not talking about a seasoned woman here between 35 and 45. We're talking a young maiden in her teens. Mary knew God, obviously, from the from the books of Moses and Psalms and the prophets' writings, and she was chosen by God to be the vessel to bear the Son of God. So let's look at a synopsis of Jesus and Mary's life. Very familiar to all of you. I don't have to stop and, and elaborate in great detail. Um, we've all celebrated the birth of Christ, and then we know the story of how Mary went, and Joseph went to the temple to um, sacrifice the two turtle doves, and on the way they met the prophet Simeon and Anna. And here was the prophetic word. Simeon's prophetic word was possibly the first words of warning, dot, 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 dot. Don't you love it when God gives you a head up, heads up? To her about Jesus when Simeon said, this child will be rejected by many in Israel. Well, Gabriel didn't tell me that. <laughs> and then in the next breath he says but he will be a great joy to many others and the last seven words 
that he spoke to her was, but a sword shall pierce your soul. But a sword shall pierce your soul. So now we know, this, you all know the story. We've just finished it. Um, Herod is killing all the babies two years and younger in Bethlehem, trying to murder and hoping to kill the king of the Jews. And so Joseph, being warmed in a dream, took Mary and Jesus and went to Egypt. Now, if we're just talking to the borderline, we're talking a 400-mile walk. If we're talking up to some great city, we have to go through the Negev Desert and all the way up. We're talking 1,000 miles. So here we have Mary. And we know that God provided traveling expenses with gold and frankincense and myrrh. And we, here we have Mary, this young mother. She doesn't have a cell phone. She doesn't have her mother. She doesn't have anybody with her. She's nursing a baby. They don't have pampers. They don't have apps. I mean, I have learned so much with my daughter having a baby. They have apps on their phones now. You know, so the newborn is born, and they show you the baby's stomach is this big when it's born. Then you feed it, and it gets to be this big. And then you feed it a bit more, and it gets to be this big. Who knew? We all raised our kids and didn't know any of that. And then, you know, um, is the baby pooping enough? And, you know, she has it all on a tablet, and it's all registered, and she writes it all out, how much she drinks and everything there. When she goes into the doctor's office, the doc pulls out the tablet, the doctor asks her all this here. I would just say, yes, they ate. Yes, they went to the bathroom. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> it came out of the doctor's office. I mean, you have to, they, know the, they want to know the color and the consistency. I'm going, seriously? <laughs> and here's Mary, a young mother with nobody to, with her except her husband, on a 400-mile journey to save the baby Jesus. Mary, being a mother possibly on this 400-mile journey, she was, because she knew that she had to leave, possibly thought of all the new mothers and the baby boys killed because of her and her son, Jesus. You ever think about that? The joy of motherhood mingled with tears. The cutting edge of the sword had begun. So, ten years have passed. You all know the story. You're very familiar with it. Jesus is the, they're now back in Nazareth, so that's another 400-mile journey back with the toddler. And, they, and they're in Nazareth. And so they're going to Jerusalem because it's Passover. And once a year, they take their trip to Jerusalem. So you're in community, you're in family, you're traveling, you go there and have a Passover, which is a celebratory time in the Jew feast, excuse me, and um, they're leaving and going home, and all of a sudden they realize Jesus is not there. So Mary and Joseph go back to Jerusalem. I mean, you get upset if you lose your child, but this is the Son of God. You lose the Son of God. <laughs> Come on, people. I think I would be nervous. Lost your son. <laughs> I don't know where he is. <laughs> so back they go to Jerusalem, and they find him sitting with the rabbis. And he's discussing the things of the kingdom. And so Mary and Joseph come to Jesus. And Jesus' reply is, don't you know I must be about my father's business? So we see the family ties are beginning to loosen. The cutting edge of the sword continues. So have you ever thought, how do I raise a son of God? I mean, how do you raise him? Think about that for a while. Let's go 18 years. For 18 years, the next 18 years, Jesus lived with Mary and Joseph in their home, and, and more children are born. In Matthew 13, 55 and 56, we read where James, Joseph, Simeon, Judas, and sisters are born. So since Joseph died during this period, it's very likely that Jesus took up family responsibilities. And of course, everyone comes with a family, and so did Jesus. Four stepbrothers, isn't that fun? <laughs> and sisters. 
I, you know, I have these questions that there are no answers to. So my question is, I've often thought, did those kids know who he was? <laughs> I mean, the son of God. Did they know that? Obviously, when he was in his ministry, they got it. <laughs> but as a kid running around. Because it says in the scriptures that Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Okay, we all know the story. Jesus is now 30. He's um, went baptized by John in the River Jordan. The dove comes down. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then he goes to the desert. He's tempted of the devil. And he calls his 12 disciples. And then we get to the next part of the story where the wedding of Cana. Now, if you see on a map, Cana is just above Nazareth. And the whole family was invited because Mary was there. And um, Mary hears about the wine. They're running out of wine. So Mary goes to Jesus to tell him the wine dilemma. And Jesus' reply was, woman, what do I have to do with you? Now, woman was not a disrespectful term in that day. You read it over and over in the scriptures many times. But it clearly marks a distance and a difference and a separation between Jesus and his mother. She is now moving into a secondary role in his life. And I call this releasing love. Where Mary has learned now, she is learning in the process of releasing Jesus to his call in his ministry, releasing Jesus to the 12 disciples, releasing Jesus to the crowds and crowds and crowds of people, and not interfering. And all of you mothers know what that means. <laughs> releasing love. We see here... <clears throat> I like it what she said. She says, she goes to the servants and she says, do whatever he tells you to do. <laughs> and you know the story of the water into wine. So this separation, the cutting edge still continues. The next thing we read of Mary and Jesus together is in Matthew chapter 12, when Jesus is really into his ministry. If you read in chapter 11, 12, and 13, you'll see crowds and crowds and crowds of people. And Jesus went and sat by Galilee. And so some of the disciples came to Jesus and said, your mother and your brother are here, and they want to talk to you. And Jesus said, who is my mother and brother? Whoever does the will of my father is my mother and my brother and my sister. So we see here that the relationship was no longer tested by the bond of blood, but it's by the bond shared in the faith of God and kingdom values and kingdom principles. Still, the cutting edge of the sword continues. The sword would pierce her own soul at the cross with all of its sharpness and pain as Mary stood at the foot of the cross on which Jesus hung like a common criminal. She drank the bitter cup of suffering too. She saw from Palm Sunday to Good Friday everything that happened to him. She heard everything that was said from Palm Sunday a good Friday. And she felt the helpless and agony as only a mother could. How many of us have stood at the side of our child that lay dying? I know what that's like. In 1990, I buried my 14-year-old. And at that time, you couldn't all be in the room. You only got them in one at a time. And so my husband was in with Elizabeth, probably. Elizabeth was 14 at the time. But my husband was in most of the morning, and so finally they said, you know, you have to let your wife come in. So I came in. And I got down by Elizabeth's ear, and I said to her, Elizabeth, this is your mother. And of course, you know the hearing is the last to go. And you can see that she understands because her heart rate goes like this here. You see it on the monitor. She understands she hears your voice. And I said to her, these are my last words to her, I said, your father loves you. Victoria loves you. Margaret loves you. And I love you. And I said to her, if it's your time to go, it's all right. I'm releasing you into the hands of Jesus, releasing love. 
See, there's some of us that have had to release our children into the hands of God. Releasing love. Or release our loved ones in the situation that they're in. And Jesus on the cross obviously did not forget to take care of his mother because he said to John, behold your mother, John the Beloved. And, your, and so from that day on, in John 19, 26, and 27, Mary went and lived in John the Beloved's home. She was there, at, present at the ascension. She was there in the upper room. She was there at the birth of the New Testament church. She meant what she said was, I am the Lord's servant. I will do whatever he desires. See, throughout the ages of time, men and women, we see men and women who live a life of releasing love. Just like Mary, we learn to release those closest to us to the plans and purposes of God. We have learned, just like Mary, to release our children, our natural children. We have learned to release our spiritual children. We have learned to release those people that we have mentored. First of all, you release them to kindergarten class. I know mothers, listen, I know mothers that put their kids on the bus and then go in and cry. Son, my kid has gone to school and I'm not going to be with them and this strange woman is going to have her for all these hours. Maybe you were one of them. <laughs> then you release them to high school. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> and then you release them to college. And then you release them to their careers. And then you release them to marriage. And then you're releasing, as I said, some of them to even death, where you say, it's time to go. I release you. I love you. So here's my question today. What would your answer be? Do we say yes to God? Have you said yes to God and accepted him into your heart and life? Do we put limitations on our lives concerning our Christian walk? Do we accept the challenges today as we stand in January of 2021? We're right at the beginning of the new year. And do we say yes to God for all that he has for us and all that we will have to adjust to in 20? We already know what adjusting was in 2020. <laughs> do we say yes to God and all the adjustment that's coming up. See, he knows what's coming up this year. We don't. Do we say yes to God for all that he has for all of us to accomplish in 2021? And do we say yes to God for all of us for the assignments that he has for us in 2020? Are we adjustable and accepting? And do we say yes? Or are you somebody that needs the details? Are you somebody that likes an explanation? Are you somebody that likes the editing privileges? Well, Lord, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. Why don't you send Lori to do it? Why don't you send Pastor Jesse to do it? Why don't you send Linda to do it? You know, I really like the editing <laughs> Do we say yes to God? Or do we have to know the details of the process? Before saying yes to God, do we always have to have our Mary stood there and said, be it unto me. That verse has challenged me my whole life. Be it unto me according to your will. See, I believe that there's a generation, and we sang it today. Let Jesus be the center of the church. See, I believe that there's a whole generation of people who know how to do church. Do you know how many denominations there are in the United States and Canada? I mean, they know how to do church. They know what to wear to church. They know where to sit in church. They know how to worship in church. And they know how to speak in church. But they don't know God. They don't know God. And we sang it, Jesus, be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of the church. See, our life journey and our process that God had reveals character and shows us who God is and what he can do and what he can be in our lives and what he and only he can do. See, we come here to church, not to do church, but we come to meet with God, hear from God, 
and, and participate in what he is doing in the earth. That's a reason here for church. See, it's in God and God alone that will keep us, that will sustain us, that will hold us through this time that we are living in. Mary walked this path with no help, nobody that has gone through it before. This week I had a woman call me and she said, you know, my sister is near death, which she did die. And she said, I am so sad. I am so sad. And I talked with her. I, I texted her back and I said, I understand that. Uh, my sister on July the 25th, just gone. I mean, just like that. And I said, I understand that sadness. I said to her, I said, I think I cried more over my sister than, than the other two family members because I've lost three family members this past year. I mean, immediate family members. And so it's one thing when you can call somebody, but Mary had no one. Who had ever raised a son of God before? Nobody before her and nobody after her. And yet she trusted God. God was the center, the center of her life. <clears throat> Mary, was an extra <clears throat> Mary was an extraordinary woman whose life's details are recorded for us. There's five things that I want us to take from her life. Number one, can you put it up? Her life challenges us in our commitment to God and the unknown process that he has. It, her life challenges us. It challenges us. Number two, her life corrects us from false teaching. Like, if you come to Jesus, your life will be a bed of roses, and you just name it and claim it, and you'll drive a Cadillac, and you'll have all this money. Her life corrects us from false teaching. Her life comforts us as we see God's love and provision again and again for us. Her, love, her life gives us courage about what and how releasing love of others to God's plan and purposes and what it looks like. And her life, it commissions us to fresh surrender and to walk by faith and not by sight and understanding. If I get explanation, then I'll do it. If I get details, then I'll do it. No, just obey. So again, I ask you in 2021, what will your answer be? Will you surrender to God and all that he has for you in 2020? I'm not asking you to surrender to a church. I'm not asking you to surrender to a pastor. I'm not asking you to surrender to an ideology. What I'm asking you is about your commitment and your surrender to God and his plans and his purposes in the kingdom for this year. During your waiting time, what will your answer be? See, I do not need to know the whys behind God's choices for me. That's not what he's teaching me. He's teaching me, instead, I'm here to learn to trust. Instead, I'm here to learn to depend on him for everything. And instead, I'm here to learn to surrender to his will for me. The whys of life are the bunny trails that will keep you running around all over the place trying to figure it out. And they will also are life's distractions. There's an old chorus that we used to sing at the altar. Of course, we didn't have worship teams back then. We just had somebody on a piano that would play and we would be at the altar. And it's a very simple chorus. I'm not a singer. But this is what it was. <clears throat> I'll say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, yes, yes. And I believe that's what the Holy Spirit and God wants, is asking us today. What will your answer be in your commitment and your surrender to God for 2021. Mary is a wonderful example of that. 
And so this morning, no hands raised, no one looking. I just want you in your pew where you're sitting to make an altar between you and God. And what will your answer be this morning? Will you say yes to do whatever he asks you? Will you say yes to obey whatever he tells you? Will you say yes to serve your assignments that he has for you in 2021? See, we have no idea what will happen in 2021. But I know the safest place for you and me is in his hand. The safest place for you and me is in the center of his will for our lives. The safest place for you and me is completely surrendered to God alone. And while our heads are bowed, I just want to pray for those that are watching this morning. And you're, you're, you're listening this morning. Who knows how you found us? But I want to speak to you because you're sitting there in your home, sitting on your sofa, and you're saying, I need to say yes to God. I need to say yes to God. I'm a sinner, and I need to say yes to God. Or maybe there's somebody sitting on their sofa who has been a backslider, has walked away from God, and today you say, I need to say yes to God. I need to come back to God. So let, let me just pray. All these people here that are here this morning are praying for you. I just want to pray for you this morning. Father, I pray for those that are listening this morning. For those that, that, that say, God, forgive me. I need to say yes to you today. I need to give you my life today. And for those that are returning and they're saying, God, forgive me for walking away. I need to say yes to you today. 2021 is so unknown. There's so many variables that are taking place in our world. That, and I need something in my life that's going to hold me. And so I say yes to God today. Forgive me. Forgive my sin. And Lord, cleanse me in Jesus' name. So I pray for us this morning here. Thank you, Lord, for Mary and her example of complete surrender to you, God. Help us to say yes today. Just help us to say yes, yes, yes. I don't know what's going to happen in 2021. I don't know what's going to happen in my life. I don't know what's going to happen in, in this nation that we live. But I know that the safest place for me to be is in the center of your will. And so I thank you for all that you're going to do in and through us. I cancel all the assignments the enemy has against your people and against your plans and purposes for the kingdom in our lives. I pray a hedge of protection around those who hear my voice. We want to know you, God. We want to know you in a greater measure. No more church, not another church. That's not what we're here for. We want to see you, God. We want to see signs and wonders and miracles and the supernatural demonstrated before the earth in 2021. Bless this congregation and those listening this morning, keep them safe. Order our steps accordingly this word, week. Your word says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So order our steps, I pray, this week. Bless each one that's here. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to be able to stand on December the 31st, 2021. And I want us to look back over the year. And this is a sports terminology, okay? I want us to be able to say on December 31st, 2021, I left it all on the field. I left it all on the field. So I just bless you this morning. Have a good week this morning, and just, I pray that you were able to say yes to God and everything that he is, has for you, and everything that he's going to challenge us with, and, and 2021 is going to be exciting, so I realize I just need to fasten my seatbelt, <laughs> 
And people say, life is dull. Oh, just serve Jesus. <laughs> it's exciting what happens. So the Lord bless each one of you and have a good week and be safe this week. Thank you. God bless you.